the person that m took advantage of me when I was a child is now painting me as the predator. Hello everyone and welcome to Secret Society. I'm Jake and today's secret meeting is all about Disney Channel star Kyle Massey. From the heights of Disney Channel stardom to the pits of clearing your own name on the Law & Crime Network. Kyle Massey has had a prolific career spiral in the past decade. What looked like the promising career of a future comedian, viner, and YouTuber would be completely destroyed by allegations of Kyle Massey and a 13-year-old girl. However, everything is not what it seems with this story, as at the very end, when the timeline reaches current day 2023, there is a major twist that completely changes everything. And honestly made me question my own reality. But I'm getting too far ahead of myself, y'all. Y'all only Raven can see into the future. So sit back, grab a snack, and let's dive into the sad, troublesome, and prolific Disney Channel career of Corey in the House and That's a Raven's Own, Kyle Massey. The Disney Channel. The most monumental network in children's television history, creating pop stars, actors, and meat shop owners as far as the eye can see. In the early 2000s, this formula caused the Disney Channel machine to explode in popularity like no one had ever seen. One channel was now deciding what makes a good role model for children. Then they would cast a child to play that role, lock them into an airtight exclusive contract, and would work their newly created role models as hard as humanly possible to get as much long longevity out of each star's career as they could. Now, the Disney stars who populated our TV screens during the golden age of Disney Channel worked day in and day out, going to audition after audition to hopefully get a morseling of a chance at a callback for their very own show or even just a side supporting character. But the star I'm talking about today was shockingly discovered by chance. See, Kyle Massey was merely a young tween when he was at an audition for his brother, Christopher Massey. Now, this was before Christopher had been cast on Zoe 101. So he was just going to any audition he could to hopefully get his foot in the door of the entertainment industry. Well, the story goes in 2003, the Disney Channel was cooking up a brand new TV show centered around a sidekick and her friends navigating everyday high school life. And it was going to be called That's So Raven. Now, when casting directors saw a young Kyle Massey in the waiting room when they called in his brother, he had exactly the look, attitude, and charm that they were looking for to play the iconic role of Raven's little brother, Corey Baxter. Kyle would be cast in the hit TV show, That's So Raven, and his career would immediately skyrocket. He's the smoothest kid in town. He's got the moves, he's got the look, and he knows just what to say. That's so look. It's poor. That's So Raven. Oh, homework, I need the computer. Get away, maggot. Okay, fine. Undermine my education, step on the hopes and dreams our father has for his children. Boy, I'd be happy if you just flushed. You had your first kiss on yeah, the show. Yeah, I had my first kiss on the show on That's a Raven. I was really nervous. I remember I was a kid, and um, yeah, that, that was it. And and they like oh broke off the set like it was a real serious scene. Woo! Look at it. It was quick, too. You look <laughs> shocked. You look like you don't know what just hit you. Was, That's because mama was watching. Yeah, and my mom was right there, but I was always just like the shy kid. So it, it took these people to bring out that uh, <laughs> comfort, I guess you could say. You know I mean? Corey Baxter would win the hearts of millions and millions of kids around the world, quickly becoming a staple character on That's So Raven. Now, That's So Raven could be an entire deep dive in itself, and to be honest, it probably will someday, because it blew up in a way Disney Channel hadn't seen since Lizzie McGuire. Annalise Vanderpool, Raven Simone, Orlando Brown, and Kyle Massey were dominating every TV screen season after season, episode after after episode. An entire generation would grow up alongside Corey and Raven as they got into endless moral hijinks that always ended in a moral lesson in the end. That's So Raven was groundbreaking for the time and was the foundation for numerous Disney spin-off projects. To start, High School Musical. See, back in the early days of That's So Raven, the Disney Channel would test a completely musical episode of the show, having Raven and her friends dance and sing across their high school. Many of the dance sequences and songs are eerily similar to that of the final product of High School Musical. Bring it to your ankle 
struggles and make me wiggle your knees I'm guaranteed to make the nation wanna follow me I got the ladies like, oh child, I need to breathe now Watch Eddie as I hold it steady I'm undercover superstar, but y'all ain't ready The game is full of gimmicks, so I'm about to make y'all feel me Take a piece of me and keep it, made the world be ready Wait a minute, I'm ahead in the game This was one of the highest rated episodes Disney Channel had ever seen. Thus, Disney gave High School Musical the green light. But the main, first, and one of the most memorable spinoff was Cory in the House. See, Cory in the House was a true That's So Raven spinoff. That's So Raven had racked up over 100 episodes, and due to syndication rules, that is the correct number of episodes for a TV show to be properly syndicated for reruns. That way, the show can air 20 episodes a week over the course of five weeks for 100 days. But there was also a much more sinister motive to the spinoff. See, due to the SAG, actors are often required to make a certain amount in royalties when a TV show reaches over a certain threshold of episodes. So instead of keeping the shows going, Disney would use the same characters, same storyline, and just put them on a boat or put them in the White House <laughs> and simply just change the name. That way they wouldn't have to pay out those extra royalties if they kept that original show going. Thus, across Disney Channel in the 2000s to 2010s, numerous spin-offs, almost identical to their original show, would debut. This was almost the fate that That's So Raven would suffer in 2007. See, right as the show reached its 100th episode mark, murmurings began swirling at the Disney Channel Corporation. A spin-off titled That's So Raven 2 was pitched to Raven Simone, all centered around her college experience, getting into all the psychic hijinks that comes with attending a university. This was a prime example of Disney's Switch the Show formula. It's almost like they're copying their own homework, then switching it up a little bit so the teacher doesn't notice. It's bizarre. But the teacher noticed, as in Raven did not want to do this spin-off project at all. She was coming to the end of her rope with the Disney Corporation, deciding to even opt out of the final Cheetah Girls movie as well. Thus, with this pitch to Raven falling dead in the water, the Disney Channel redirected their attention to Raven's younger brother on the show, Kyle Massey. Even more specifically, his character, Corey Baxter. They would dream up a show kids could only imagine, moving into the White House with the President of the United States. The synopsis for Cory in the House reading, it's a brand new life for Cory Baxter as well as his father, Victor Baxter. As the father and son duo move from San Francisco, California to the White House in Washington, D.C. After Victor Baxter is named the new personal White House chef for President Richard Martinez. This concept, while outlandish, unpredictable, and seemingly fake, actually came to production in the year 2007, directly after Raven's departure from the network. Jason Dolly, Madison and Pettis and Kyle Massey would make audiences tune in week after week for almost two years. And y'all, I literally remember the night the show premiered. I was seven years old and me and my sister stayed up all night to watch Cory in the House premiere. And I don't know if it's just because I was excited, but y'all, we loved it. Like, that was our favorite show. Madison Pettis was a queen to like... Well, Cory in the House didn't last 100 episodes, or even the 65. Cory in the House was quietly canceled after only two seasons. And this was somewhat shocking after the success of That's So Raven. Raven did actually guest star on one of the episodes titled That's So In The House on season one, and that obviously made a huge splash. Like, obviously enough for a second season, but apparently not a third. Directly after Corey In The House, Kyle Massey would snag two important jobs that would pay him handsomely for the next four years. The first would be the voice of Milo and Disney's fish hooks alongside the troublesome Justin Roiland. Now, a behind-the-scenes look at Disney Channel's newest animated series, Fish Hooks. Dude, I really want to concentrate on Mr. Baldwin's lesson, but I just can't. And then Oscar is definitely the voice of reason. <laughs> he brings a little bit of <laughs> groundedness to the three of them. This can't happen! Milo, we have to do something! Seriously! Which y'all, let me know if you want me to cover that over here in the comment section below because I've been itching to talk about that. Now, Kyle's star was truly on the rise, and he would get cast in Dancing with the Stars on Disney Channel's subsidiary network, ABC. He was able to remain in every episode. The champions of Dancing with the Stars are... Yeah, we made 
made it this far, so I want to thank all the fans that made this possible. So without them, Derek and Jennifer, congratulations. Great job, both of you. However, him and his partner Lacey Schwimmer didn't end up taking the trophy, and instead snagged the runner-up position. Kyle was hailed as the Fresh Prince of Dancing with the Stars, due to his now famous freestyle performance of Tootsie Roll. Which y'all, while I was editing this, I actually found a video on Dancing with the Stars or ABC's official YouTube channel. America, you need to vote for me as your final all-star. I'm the all-American kid. I mean, I've got what Dancing with the Stars needs. It's no all-star season without Kyle Massey. Whoa! Go to ABC.com to vote now. Yes, I can can. Where it's Kyle Massey campaigning to be on Dancing with the Stars again for the all-star season that directly followed his season. So it was literally within a year that he was going to try to go back on Dancing with the Stars because they had an online voting feature where the fans could vote in one of the past castmates to come back for all-stars. However, he unfortunately didn't win, but he did go on to the live residency show in Vegas that same year. So his Dancing with the Stars legacy wasn't complete until then. However, after Fish Hooks ended in 2014, tragedy would seemingly strike the Massey brothers in a very public way. On November 8th, 2014, it was reported on TMZ that Young Money rapper Lil Twist was being accused of breaking into Kyle Massey's home and pantsing his brother after beating him to a pulp. The bombshell TMZ report reading, Lil Twist has done it again. He's now a battery suspect for allegedly beating up Kyle Massey's brother, Chris Massey, and then pantsing him for bad measure. Chris, Kyle, Twist, and others were hanging out at Kyle's apartment across the Grove in LA, Friday around 4 p.m., when an argument broke out. Twist, who is back in Justin Bieber's fold, and some buddies beat up Chris Massey, most famous for his role in Nickelodeon's Zoe 101. After pounding him, one source says Twist and his buds doled out some humiliation by pulling Chris's pants off. Now, Chris went to the hospital to get some treatment and filed a police report. We're told cops will investigate. Twist knows he's in trouble. He's been busted for DUI, drugs, and beating up a jail phone. Two days later, TMZ updated the situation, saying Lil Twist accused of robbery and brass knuckled beatdown. Lil Twist and his buddies didn't just beat up Chris Massey during a fight Friday. They pummeled him with brass knuckles and robbed him. Law enforcement sources tell us Twist is a felony suspect for robbery and battery after the incident, which occurred at the apartment of Chris's brother, Kyle Massey. We're told Chris kicked Twist out of the apartment after an argument, but Chris says Twist returned a short time after with four guys, beat Chris with brass knuckles, and stole his wallet and cell phone. The Zoe 101 star was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment. Chris, who says he was also pants once Twist prosecuted. As for Twist, he's telling friends no weapons were used. However, on November 15th, a warrant was issued for Lil Twist's arrest. Reports stating that Young Money member and former Justin Bieber bro Lil Twist is wanted for alleged involvement in the beating and robbery of former Nickelodeon actor Chris Massey and brother Kyle. The LAPD issued a warrant for the rapper on charges of robbery and invading a home. An attorney for the Massey brothers confirmed the warrant, but the LA district attorney said no charges have been filed yet. However, one year later, the sound of a gavel would echo through the courtroom, as Little Twist's fate would seemingly be sealed. On June 5th, 2015, TMZ reported that Chris Massey sued Lil Twist, saying Lil Twist is having a bad Friday. Not only is he set to be arranged for allegedly orchestrating a brutal beatdown of Chris Massey, he's now being sued for it as well. Chris says he suffered cuts and bruises and needed stitches over his eye. Perhaps more painful in the suit, he says Twist and his crew made off with his Rolex. Justin Bieber's ex-pal has already been criminally charged with six felonies for the incident. Okay, but like, why is Justin Bieber so dramatic? Like, the year prior when the first article was written, he's apparently in Lil Twist's centerfold of friends, and now he's an ex-friend? Like, like, whoa, sh really changes quick around there. I feel like I need to do a video about him and like that whole era with like the monkey at the airport. Let me know if you want to hear about that. Anyway, Lil Twist was looking at some very significant prison time if he was convicted for this crime. 
Hey, so what's going on with you and Little Twist? You obviously, you obviously got an alter altercation with him in the past with Little Twist. He socked you up pretty good. So what? Little Twist. Who's that? The rapper, Justin Bieber's friend. Justin Bieber's friend. That's like it was a big father. story like a month ago. I don't know nothing about it. Little Twist is charged with six felonies against your brother, man, of the assault case. Have you spoken with him about it? Yeah, it's against your brother, not you. Sorry. I don't even know who that dude is you're talking about. Oh, really? I never heard of him. Oh, you never heard of Little Twist? Nobody's heard of him. Finally, one year later after this report, two years after the incident, Lil Twist was sentenced to one year in jail for the brutal beatdown and pantsing of Christopher Massey. Now, y'all, the pantsing wasn't, like, illegal. I mean, I'm sure pantsing is illegal, right? But, like, I just wanted to say that. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he nearly got a decade behind bars because Lil Twist had, like, six felonies. However, he dodged it with a plea. But this wasn't the only legal trouble Kyle Massey would find himself in. Only three years after Lil Twist's conviction, Kyle Massey would be sued by a 13-year-old girl for some absolutely heinous and unimaginable indiscretions. TMZ broke the story, stating former Disney star Kyle Massey is being sued by a 13-year-old girl who claims he sent her sexually explicit photos in which he allegedly included shots of his the girl claims in the lawsuit she and her mom met the That's So Raven star at Universal City back in 2009, when she was only four years old. She says Massey maintained contact with her and held himself out as a father figure. The girl says she had been long interested in pursuing an entertainment career and hoped Kyle would help. She claims in December that he spoke with his mother and invited the child to fly out to LA, where he would take care of her and help her get an agent. He said the girl could stay with him and his girlfriend. The girl and her mom claim days later, Massey began sending the girl numerous sexually explicit text messages, images, and videos including a Snapchat image of Massey holding his pew with a corresponding text message that reads, LOL, just messing with you, LOL. She also claims he sends her a video of his pew. pew. The girl is suing for at least $1.5 million. We've reached out to Massey's rep, so far, no words back. However, only days later, TMZ would publish a story from the side of Kyle Massey's team, stating that former Disney star Kyle Massey is vehemently denying allegations that he sent explicit photos to a 13-year-old girl, claiming the lawsuit against him is a clear and simple case of extortion. Kyle's lawyer, Lee Hutton, tells TMZ his client couldn't be clearer, telling TMZ no child should ever be exposed to explicit materials, and I unequivocally and categorically deny all alleged misconduct. Kyle says it's all just a money grab. He claims earlier this year the accuser's legal team demanded $1.5 million, threatening to go public to destroy his career if he did not comply. Hutton says his client took the accuser to pound sand. Kyle is also asking his fans and the public, quote, not to jump to conclusions based on the allegations alone, but reserve judgment until the whole story comes to light, proving these allegations baseless. Well, only two years later, the courts would seemingly disagree. NBC News publishing at the time, the actor Kyle Massey, who starred on That's So Raven, and other Disney Channel shows, is accused of sending pornographic material to a 13-year-old girl. Prosecutors allege the crime happened between December 2018 and January 2019, and happened over the Snapchat social media platform. Massey, who's 29, has been charged with one count of communication with a minor for immoral purposes in King County Superior Court in Washington. The mother told police that at about the same time that her daughter was receiving the messages, Massey asked her to send the daughter from Seattle to Los Angeles to stay with him and his girlfriend. The document said investigators requested data from Snapchat for the account allegedly belonging to Massey and saw, quote, chat text messages between him and the minor which supported the files given to police by the mother. According to a certification for probable cause, it is unclear whether photos or videos were visible in the chat history. 
Prosecutors requested at the court issue a sexual assault protection order for the minor and forbid Massey from contacting her at all. Court documents also show the state asked for an order banning Massey from the internet as a whole, quote, absent installation of a computer monitoring system. Now, Lee A. Hutton, Kyle's attorney, reiterated these same sentiments in a statement obtained by NBC News on Thursday, saying Massey claims that the allegations then and now are extortative. The statements made to the police regarding the accuser's own counsel's advice seem peculiar, tearing away the veracity from the stale allegations. The accuser in no hidden agenda attempt to use the Washington courts as a platform for revenge after losing the civil matter. Indeed, California counsel withdrew from representation from the accuser, leaving us to conclude that he was not willing to make misrepresentation to the court. The Washington matter is already showing problematic signs. Massey was never properly served as notified as represented to the court, and the pleadings are procedurally and substantially deficient on its face. The attorney said Massey will, quote, aggressively defend himself and will seek civil damages from those that refuse to hear the facts. Now, Kyle failed to appear in court that same week, and a deferred bench warrant was issued. According to the King County Superior Court, his next hearing was scheduled for July 12th. Well, Kyle was eventually charged with a felony. According to legal docs obtained by TMZ, Massey's been charged with one count of communication with a minor for immoral purposes. Now, Kyle was being accused of sending sexually explicit material to a 13-year-old girl. However, according to Kyle's team, he learned of his own charges through the media, thus evading any due process. His lawyer telling TMZ at the time, Kyle just became aware of his charges yesterday through the media, and he maintains that the allegations are motivated by revenge. Because the accuser didn't succeed in her 2019 civil suit. The lawyer also says that the actor was not properly served or notified of his court hearing, but he intends to aggressively defend these accusations. Telling TMZ, we plan to seek an early dismissal, finally putting this bad behavior to rest. The 13-year-old girl's legal team initially opted for the civil suit against Massey. But like I said, according to the new docs, it went nowhere because she says her lawyers told her they didn't think Massey had enough money to make the case worth it. But according to the new docs, the case went absolutely nowhere because she says her lawyer told her they didn't think Massey had enough money to make the case worth it. So she says she then went to the sheriff's office to file a report. Police say they began investigating in early 2020 and the girl's mother told cops Massey had known her since she was four years old. According to the legal docs, documents, police were given a thumb drive by the girl's mother containing the material. And after these charges became public, allegedly the company Dr. Dabber cut their endorsement deal with Kyle, thus leaving him even lower than before and without a paycheck. Now, according to the Law and Crime Network, the case against Kyle was dropped in December of the same year, aka 2021, saying allegedly all after the mother's lawyer withdrew his representation because she, quote, continuously failed to respond to his efforts to communicate with her. This is when things get absolutely insane. See, years would pass and Kyle would remain silent on the allegations and the case. But eventually in April of 2023, Kyle Massey would break his silence, not only alleging that his name should be cleared, but that his accuser was actually his abuser, saying that the mother of the 13-year-old girl who accused him, she had been abusing him since he was a child. Our response to those allegations are that, first off, we would need to go back. Let's go back to to the mother of this of this kid, right? You stated in your, in your um, paperwork that I've known this kid <clears throat> since she was four years old, right? Yeah. Well, the, the, the truth about my relationship with that mother is that that mother had a inappropriate sexual relationship with me since I was a kid when I was 15. Now I can sit here and I can, and I can like look at you and, and say it without breaking down, but you gotta understand this was like one of the hardest moments in my life um, because the person that molested, raped, took advantage of me when, I'm a, when I was a child is now painting me as the predator. So like I said, this is where things get dicey. I do believe that 
Two things can be true at once, but at the same time, while Kyle has given blanket statements in the past about categorically denying all claims that were made, he has never specifically responded to those Snapchat screenshots that were in the court documents. So it's kind of like, what are you doing? Like, two things can be true at once, you know? So I think that he's like kind of banking on that being so shocking and revealing, and it is, but at the same time, it's like, y'all, like, two things can be true at once. Like, that's not lost on me. Now, this is where a huge feud breaks out between Orlando. Orlando Brown and Kyle Massey. So Kyle Massey speaks on Orlando Brown, basically saying that not all stars can be as fortunate as him and Raven. Yeah, I always talk to Annalise. She's nuts. I love her today. <laughs> I love you guys' I talk TikTok. To I talk to OP every now and then. I talk to Orlando. You know, I be checking in on him. You know, everyone goes through a lot of different things. Um, and and you know, when you look at people like Raven and myself. You know, we're just examples of people that were able to get through it. You know, there are more people that fall, fall victim to Hollywood than make it through unscathed. Yeah. You know, so so the people that uh, go through trials and tribulations, like I, we we can't judge them because we were blessed enough to make it through those exact same problems. So, you know, with Orlando, I'm just always there for him. I, t I tap in with him every now and then to make sure he's okay. I'll. I'll you know, but some, sometimes everything's not for social media. You know what I mean? Everything's yeah. not for the world to know. But, you know, me and him, we have a great relationship. That's my that's my bro. You know what I mean? One of my oldest friends. Yeah. Was it difficult for you to see some of the public things that happened? And was there any conversation about that at all? Yeah, it's hard, you know, because a lot of people, like, they'll make jokes about him or roast him. But they don't really understand you know, what he's been through. And it's not my place to disclose to you or the world exactly what he's been through. But a person like me that knows, it just, you know, it, it makes it harder for me to judge him or place blame because I know his situation. So that's why all I do is just let him know that I'm here for him and that's all yeah. I do. And like, okay, I don't know about y'all, but like a lot of thoughts went through my head while that video was playing of what he was saying. Like, you know, when you look at people like Raven and myself, you know, we're just examples of people that were able to get through it. D do you agree? Like, comment below what thoughts were going through your head because I was just kind of thinking like, wait a minute, but like, wait, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what is going on there? Well, girl, Orlando Brown said it. He came out and said pretty much everything there is to say. Here's what he has to say. Oh, Kyle, did you go to court yet? <laughs> so showing you your to that 14 year old. I'm trying, I mean, because you'll never be me. You need to go to court first and handle your problems and fix the things you do with your little d Okay? Have a great day, buddy. And if you remember, Orlando Brown is the man who was bailed out of jail by Natalie Nunn on Bad Boys Club. I have a whole video about it. I'll link it below. Even if my name was Natalie Nunn, you bitches still couldn't chin check me. So, like, popping off over there too but he was like no way we are not the same very very different energy from whenever there was the that's so raven reunion back in like 2014 2015. Oh, you're like a baby yes. what is it did they treat you like you're like a younger brother these yes they did. <laughs> they did these, these people were um a very one of a kind part of my life <laughs> it's adorable, by to the say way. the least like these people right here the memories that we have together um on, on the set was just Unbelievable. Like, I love reaction. We raised Thanks. him. Yeah. We raised him. <laughs> now, actually, since that's so raving, you went on to do a bunch of other shows and you came in second place on Dancing with the Stars, yeah. which is like awesome. Yeah. So exciting. What are you working on now? Um, well, I mean, I have a, I have a lot of different uh, projects. Oh my God. What am I doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. That was a freestyle right there. Look at that. You see, my gut was a lot bigger, too, so I'm really killing it. All right, I'm sorry. I'm not that skinny. It was actually named a different show altogether. Like Angelina Jolie. It was. Who has the part? Yeah, she's just, she's so not No, you're Miley Cyrus. Well, they just wanted somebody more beautiful than Angelina Jolie, so of course they Don't went look to like me. that, Raven. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking. Okay, I'm not talking. You know what? I mean, that was on The View with Raven, so I think it was an entirely different audience, but like they actually acted like they liked each other there, and now it seems like they don't want anything to do with each other. Now, Raven would go on to actually do another Disney Channel spinoff for That So Raven, this time called Raven's Home. And with Kyle Massey having allegations before it even started, neither him or Orlando Brown were invited back. So, y'all, that's where I'm gonna end it. Honestly, Kyle Massey, this is the last thing that he said, and 
the Law and Crime Network is the final thing that he's spoken to. This is the final interview he's given. It was in April of 2023. So be sure to do your own research and check and see if there's any updates on any of this because y'all, very convoluted story. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see y'all later. Bye.